According to several versions of the hadiths regarding the night journey, Muhammad was instructed by Allah to pray, as well as his followers, the staggering number of fifty prayers a day. These were reduced to a more manageable five prayers a day, with the help of Moses. Will you elaborate? Let us start with a shortened version of the story first, and then the explanations. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 1.345 narrated by Abu Dahr. Allah's apostle said, While I was at Mecca, the roof of my house was opened, and Gabriel descended, opened my chest, and washed it with zamzam water. Then he brought a golden tray full of wisdom and faith, and having poured its contents into my chest, he closed it. Then he took my hand and ascended with me to the nearest heaven. When I reached the nearest heaven, I saw a man sitting with some people on his right and some on his left. I asked Gabriel, Who is he? He replied, He is Adam, and the people on his right and left are the souls of his offspring. Then he ascended with me till we reached the second heaven. Abu Dhar added that this prophet met Adam, Idris, Moses, Jesus, and Abraham. He, Abu Dhar, did not mention on which heaven they were, but he mentioned that the Prophet met Adam on the nearest heaven and Abraham on the sixth heaven. The Prophet added, Then Gabriel ascended with me to a place where I heard the creaking of the pens. Ibn Hazm and Anas bin Malik said, The Prophet said, Then Allah enjoined fifty prayers on my followers. When I returned with this order of Allah, I passed by Moses who asked me, what has Allah enjoined on your followers? I replied, He has enjoined fifty prayers on them. Moses said, Go back to your Lord and appeal for reduction, for your followers will not be able to bear it. So I went back to Allah and requested for reduction. And he reduced it to half. When I passed by Moses again and informed him about it, he said, Go back to your Lord as your followers will not be able to bear it. So I returned to Allah and requested for further reduction, and half of it was reduced. I again passed by Moses, and he said to me, Return to your Lord, for your followers will not be able to bear it. So I returned to Allah, and he said, These are five prayers, and they are all equal to fifty, for my word does not change. I returned to Moses, and he told me to go back once again. I replied, Now I feel shy of asking my Lord again. The story of Muhammad's ascent through the seven heavens is a variation upon the one Muhammad copied and altered to suit himself from the Midrash of the Jews regarding a similar but prior experience made by Moses. The listener should be made aware that there is no mention in this version of the traditions of Muhammad riding Burak, nor any intermediary visit to the Temple of Solomon at Jerusalem to get from Mecca to the seven heavens. If Allah really loved Muhammad as much as he claims in the Ahadith, then the compassionate and merciful Allah could not and would not have ordered him and his followers to pray 50 times a day. This would have meant that they would neither have time to work, trade, make a living or sleep, since they would have had to pray every 28.8 minutes of the day and night. Muhammad, slavishly and bereft of any thought or logic, accepted this utterly untenable and unmerciful instruction without any prevarication or objection. Even as an allegorical story, it beggars belief in its stupidity and blasphemy, for insulting Allah's wisdom, compassion, mercy and fairness, if Allah is the God of Israel and Jesus. It was because Moses repeatedly insisted that Muhammad should ask Allah for a reduction of such an onerous and unreasonable demand that was ultimately reduced from 50 to 5 prayers a day that Muhammad could even have a religion. Both Muhammad and his followers owe Moses an incredible debt of gratitude. Again and again, it can be shown that without a shadow of a doubt, the whole of the cult belief system of Muhammad is built upon the Islamite precepts and foundations of the Bible, as well as upon almost all the traditions and fetishes of the pagan Arabs. In a different version of the same story, Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 4.429, narrated by Malik bin Sasa, the Prophet said, While I was at the house in a state midway between sleep and awakefulness, an angel recognized me as the man lying between two men. 
A golden tray full of wisdom and belief was brought to me, and my body was cut open from the throat to the lower part of the abdomen, and then my abdomen was washed with zamzam water, and my heart was filled with wisdom and belief. Al-Buraq, a white animal smaller than a mule and bigger than a donkey, was brought to me, and I set out with Gabriel. When I reached the nearest heaven... In this version, Al-Buraq was used to transport Muhammad from Mecca to the first heaven without any landing at Jerusalem. It should be pointed out that in all the different sources, including Bukhari Hadith 5.227 and 9.608 of the above story, the following extremely important observations should be taken into account. 1. In none of them did Muhammad go to Jerusalem, but went directly from Mecca to the heavens. 2. In none of them did he pray at Jerusalem. 3. There are important discrepancies between the various versions regarding the place where he was asleep, the number of angels who were present and whom he met in the different heavens. 4. In none of them was Burak tied to or at any sacred rock or wall at Jerusalem. 5. In all of them, it was the advice of Moses which saved Muhammad and Islam from complete and utter irrelevance. 6. In numerous hadiths, Muhammad claims he was the most beloved of Allah's apostles. Based upon the hadiths, it was not through an act of love that Allah demanded 50 prayers from Muhammad and his followers. 7. All of them attest that Muhammad's vital organs were washed and that he was filled with belief. Why was he filled with belief if he was as sinless as his followers insist in their dogma of Isma'? Where among all the above discrepancies is the truth?